method for converting a, Gauss, a set of Gaussian basis functions into information that we could access easily on a computer. And in particular, at the end of the video, we had programmed our Gaussian basis functions for the 6-31G basis set for the hydrogen and helium atoms. Now that we have our basis functions, we're ready to start using them to make matrices that we'll need to solve in order to calculate the total electronic energy. And in this series of videos, we're going to build the two simplest matrices, the overlap, or S matrix, and the kinetic energy, or T matrix. If you recall from quantum mechanics or our first video, each matrix will have will be a matrix of size number of basis functions times the number of basis functions. And it will be a square matrix. And the each individual element of a given matrix, let's say O sub M N, will be the overlap integral uh, of basis function O times an operator O, sorry, basis function M times operator O times basis function N. <clears throat> and we'll need to evaluate this for each combination of basis functions in our basis function set. Now, if you would like to know more about this, I highly recommend uh, the, the article Gaussian Basis Sets and Molecular Integrals by Helgacher and Taylor. Um, it's a very uh, thorough and relatively easy to read description of how to calculate these integrals. We'll just be giving an overview here in this set. In this video, we'll We'll give an overview of what our strategy is going to be to calculate the overlap matrix and the kinetic energy matrix, and then the two videos following that, we'll actually write the code that allows us to calculate those matrix values. So uh, just an aside, one of the questions you might be asking is why are we starting with the overlap matrix and the kinetic energy matrix? And the reason is that those are the two simplest matrices that we need to calculate. The overlap matrix uh, is just the overlap of each basis function with every other basis function, or just the overlap integral. And we need this because our basis functions aren't all orthonormal to each other. The kinetic energy operator is also extremely easy to calculate. In atomic units, the kinetic energy operator is just minus the Laplacian, or minus the quantity dx squared plus dy squared plus dz squared. The reason that this is easy to calculate is that when we uh, apply this operator to the nth basis function, what we're going to get out is a series of polynomials times the basis function. And then that overlap integral between the resulting functions and the nth basis function is, again, easy to compute. So why are these integrals easy to compute? Well, that's the whole reason why we're using a Gaussian basis set. And what it comes down to is two quantities. First, the Gaussian basis functions are separable. So right now we're looking at s orbitals, which are spherically symmetric, and we can write them as a, as a Gaussian in spherical coordinates of e to the minus alpha r minus r sub a squared. But we can split that up into uh, three individual Gaussians, a Gaussian in the x coordinate, a Gaussian in the y coordinate, times a Gaussian in the z coordinate. And we can therefore split our integral over all space into three one-dimensional integrals. And we have something called the Gaussian product theorem. The Gaussian product theorem states that if I have a Gaussian at, func a Gaussian at location A and a Gaussian with <clears throat> at location B, and I multiply them together, the resulting function A times B is another Gaussian with a different exponent centered somewhere between A and B. And if we know that our function, the resulting function of A times B is another Gaussian, we can apply the Gaussian integral theorem to numerically evaluate it very simply. Okay? And a very simple result. And so that's what we're going to do. So for the overlap matrix, all we need to do is for each combination of one dimensional Gaussian functions, what is the new Gaussian, and then what is the integral for that? And so if I have two Gaussians at one at a, an exponent alpha, and a Gaussian at b, an exponent beta, and I multiply them together, I will get a new Gaussian with exponent lowercase p, which is just alpha plus beta, and it will be the, the geometric mean will be its new location, so it's weighted, uh, weighted mean by the exponent, so alpha times a plus beta times b 
over alpha plus beta will give me the location of my new, uh, the center of my new Gaussian function. The amplitude of that new Gaussian function will be given by a product of two factors, e to the minus lowercase q, which is just alpha beta over a plus b, or the geometric mean of the exponents, times the midpoint of the two Gaussians, a minus b. And so the resulting integral will just be the new amplitude factor, e to the minus q, q squared, times the integral overall space of this little, little smaller Gaussian, which will be the square root of pi over p. Now, this situation changes significantly when we start introducing angular momentum, because when we introduce angular momentum, the product of basis function A and basis function B uh, are no longer, we, don't, we no longer have everything centered at point P, we have these things that are centered at the original atom point, these polynomials. And it's dealing with these polynomials is the whole reason why we're ignoring angular momentum for now. And we'll come back to that once we've written the program uh, and, and have a better understanding of what's going on. Okay, so to calculate the overlap matrix, we need to loop over each basis set, each function in the basis set. And then we're going to again loop over each function in the basic set a second time. So at this point, in my four, two for loops, I'll have basis function A and basis function B. And then I need to loop over the, each primitive Gaussian inside A, which we're going to call, we're going to give the index NBA for the number basis A, and then primitive Gaussian NBB inside basis function B. We're going to split that into its X, Y, and Z components. For each X, Y, and Z component, we're going to determine the new Gaussian location exponent P, and then we'll apply the Gaussian integral theorem for that. Well then, for each A and B basis function, we'll then sum over all the primitive Gaussians uh, that come out of that. And we're going to weight them by the appropriate normalization constants, contraction coefficients, and then sum them, and we'll get our matrix element for S sub AB. The kinetic energy matrix is very similar. Uh, again, we're going to loop over all basis functions. We're going to loop over them all again, so we're going to have a double for loop. Then we're going to have another set of for loops where we loop over the primitive Gaussian functions. And then we're going to apply the del squared operator onto uh, Gaussian function B and the primitive Gaussian inside that G and BB. When we do that, we take the, the Laplacian. What we're going to get are three new Gaussian functions, three of the, or six new Gaussian functions. Three of them are the same. And then three of them are Gaussian functions that are multiplied by polynomials. And we'll deal with these polynomials uh, individually. Once we have angular momentum, it's actually easier. Once we've written the code to deal with angular momentum, this will be a little bit easier. Um, but for right now, I, I don't want to get too bogged down into this. But we'll calculate what these new, <clears throat> new functions are and their overlap with every primitive Gaussian in a given basis function A. Uh, and then we'll sum over those multiplied by their uh, contraction coefficients and their normalization constants to get the matrix element T sub AB. And that's all we need to do to calculate our overlap and kinetic energy matrices. Stay tuned with me to the next video, and we'll write the code that we need to calculate the matrix elements for matrix S, or the overlap matrix. See you next video.